hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a catch up and bridge the gap between recent reads that I've read basically which are now books that I read last month but I kind of want to explain them in a little bit of detail and go through my good reads and just tick them off so that I'm kind of up to date with everything because I'm currently going through my library book haul which became a TBR um, and I'm slowly going through them. So if I get this pile of books kind of spoken about, talked about on this channel, then I can just consider that. So as you can tell in the thumbnail, I've got a glass of red wine with me. So basically I had quite a stressful day at work. I was on the phones non-stop at my GP surgery where I work. I took over 120 calls today. Uh, that was a lot of social interaction. So the the book nerd in me was like, have a glass of red wine and calm down. And also, before you all worry, thinking, oh my God, it's Wednesday. I don't actually have a day at work tomorrow, I'm off. So I just thought I would have a Friday night, basically, early. So I got my hair done this week, which I'm really happy with. My best friend did it for me. I just went round to her house and she did that for me. And I got my nails did did. So I'm feeling really good at the moment. And I thought, why not? The house is empty. I'm having a glass of red wine, chilling. Um, why not just kind of have a catch up with you guys so I'm gonna go through my good reads so if I'm looking down it's because a lot of the books I've lent to my mum to start reading so I have kind of not got a lot to hand I've only got a small pile over here but and then I just kind of like glancing at my good reads to have a bit of an idea of, of what I rated the books so I'm gonna take a slurp and then I'm gonna get get going so very quick one um, I did mention in my Goodreads wrap up that I read Little Women by Louise May Alcott. I also decided to complete the collection while I was there. So there's Little Women, there is Good Wives. I'm sorry, you can't really see because I have my lamp here because it's starting to go a little bit darker because you know we're heading into winter and everything. Um, little Men and Joe's Boys. So I kind of read these two and I both put them as four stars. I'd read those before but I'd never finished the collection. I put these as four stars because I remember both of them kind of simultaneously in my mind and they're both kind of the same. But then when we start getting on to Little Men and Joe's Boys, we kind of lose the March sisters as such and we go through their children and then Joe adopts some boys in a house and so we kind of move on. So I give these two three out of five stars because they were entertaining but I'm really all about the girls so once the girls kind of petered off and started their own lives I had less interest in the second generation um, and they're easy comfort kids reads um, so I got through them pretty quickly but I wasn't going to spend much time on this video talking about them because they were just quick easy easy things so that's them and then I read my sister the serial killer by Onyinkan Braithwaite. Onyinkan? Um, I'm really bad at pronunciation, so I'm really sorry. So I read this in August, kind of the beginning of August. And obviously it's super short, so I got through it quite quickly. I ended up giving this five stars. Now, it wasn't a completely faultless book, if I'm being completely honest. Um, you can tell it's a debut. There is a, There are a few kinks with it. But I was kind of a bit of a, in a reading slump after reading Louise May Alcott's books because they, they were kind of very repetitive towards the end and it's getting a bit tedious with them. And the, the reading experience of reading them back to back kind of slowed me down. And this was such a quick romp that I think I finished it within a day or two. I would have finished it in a day. But when I work at, at work, there's no, if it's quiet, I have 10 minutes to read, you know, it's and I try and pack reading into my lunch. But then if I have late days or... I come home and I'm exhausted. Work kind of stops me from being able to constantly read, whereas this would have been an afternoon one sitting kind of book. This follows sisters, Kerides and Ayula. Sorry if I pronounced them wrong. And it's based in Nigeria and Ayula kind of is very beautiful girl and she can kind of keep a man pretty easily she's got a lot of male interest but she keeps getting boyfriends and killing them and then Kerides is expected to clean up the mess so we kind of start the story where she's helping her sister dispose and clean of a body and clean the flat 
it's really really interesting this book it kind of I flew through it it got me out of that reading something like I said but it was really interesting the character development I'm really enjoying that there's kind of a real interest in the moment at the moment in African literature and um, Nigerian literature and from some other places because I find the the writing style of this book and I've read a few others quite recently um, really really interesting. This was a fantastic idea of kind of having it from the point of view of a relative of a serial killer and not kind of from the point of view of a victim which was really interesting because we don't really get to know much about Ayola's victims and um, it was really interesting from the sister's point of view because it kind of had that sibling rivalry being jealous of your sister kind of thing in the backdrop of such a serious subject matter so this was really really funny and light-hearted ironically considering it's it is so dark like I've just said it kind of has dark humour to it and it was so short and it was so fast-paced that I raced through it and it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and I think it's been on the Man Book Long List so it's really had a powerful effect on everybody since it's come out and I would definitely instantly read anything else that she brings out I think it was really fun I think it's just limiting in the sense that it's just an idea that once it's been executed the idea is kind of more exciting than the execution I think but there was so much subject matter to get into with this for such a short book the writing style was really great so I gave it five stars purely because I just enjoyed the reading experience so much it was one that will definitely stick with me so there we go there we go so um I'm just going to take a slip while I figure out where my next book is so The next book I read, which is currently with my mum, is Instructions for a Heatwave by Maggie O'Farrell. So I saw that Simon over at Simon's... I always do that. So Simon over at Savage Reads. I always go Simon over at Simon, Simon Savage Reads, but that's not his YouTube name. At Savage Reads was reading it um, August, July time, and it kind of made me want to read it because he said it's really summery. It's based in the heatwave of 76, I believe, because I since I've watched videos of him where I mentioned it again so I want to say it's the hero of 76 and it follows family and then it kind of follows the mum of the family and she's with the husband at the beginning of the story and he goes out to, ca uh, to fetch the paper which he normally always does and he kind of just doesn't come back and the whole story is that there's three siblings who kind of reunite with the mum who some of them are closer than others and the siblings have had fractured relationship as well and they all kind of come together and we all have from their point of view to find their dad and it kind of is a really interesting juicy kind of story about familial ties and their sense of identity within the family structure all individually and then we kind of question the integrity of the father and then there's kind of some scandals that come out and it's kind of in the backdrop of kind of a Catholic family who were based, I believe they were based in Ireland, but then they kind of moved over to London. So I gave it four stars. I probably would give it between four slash 4.5 because I find it really hard on Goodreads because obviously they're just set numbers. And I'm a bit of an in-betweeny kind of person because I find it very hard to differentiate between what I class as Goodreads. So yeah, I would say four slash 4.5 out of five stars. Um, that was also one I got through really quickly. It, you definitely get the summer atmosphere from that book. I have noticed that in the last 18 months, I've really enjoyed books about family relationships, books about marriages, books where we're questioning the relationship and kind of the intimacy of people's intimate relationships, personal relationships. Some authors, so Celeste Ng and Tyler, um, who do those kind of stories really well. So I quite enjoy them and, and this book, kind of really got into those subject matters which I really enjoyed so yeah there's that one and then the next one I read after that was Ponty by Charlene Teo which I will also put a picture up here so I was really surprised I basically looked back on my reading experience and realized that I enjoyed it kind of as much as I enjoyed my sister the serial killer so I also gave it five stars so it kind of is set in Singapore in modern day Singapore and it's about a girl who kind of, we go through her point of view, her mother's and her friend. So we learn, she develops this relationship with a friend um, at school that kind of has implications on herself. And they kind of 
get estranged at a later point and we as the reader don't really know why and in the background to this she has a very fractured relationship with her mother her name is sue sue yeah and um her mother was famous in kind of i think it's the 80s or 70s 80s um for some very low budget horror movies that were popular for a limited amount of time in singapore and she was kind of the protagonist, evil spirit, horror focal point for these films, which were called Ponty, which is what the book is called. And so we kind of see from their point of view how her mother's kind of depression at the lack of success in her life impacts on her relationship with her daughter. And, and she kind of has a very nasty, negative view of her daughter. And then her daughter develops this friendship with Cersei. And they have a very... Um, unsettling relationship themselves and then we kind of see a viewpoint from them um kind of later in life when they're fully grown up and again it really ticks those boxes for me of kind of looking at these intimate relationships and things not quite going well and, and kind of retrospectively looking at things and introspectively looking at things so I gave it five stars because I really really enjoyed it and again like to my sister the serial killer I just raced through it so it was that one and then the next one I want to talk about is The Making of a Marioness by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So this is one of my Persephone books. I have mentioned it in a previous video. I unfortunately gave this three out of five stars. I've read another um, Persephone book, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. And I enjoyed that so much more than this. This became a little bit tedious for me because the first half of the book is really floaty and ridiculous. So... Um, Lord Walderhurst is looking for a woman and Emily Fox Sexton um, is kind of not as, as socially high up as Mr Walderhurst and she kind of gets invited to a mutual event through his cousin who she's kind of working under and her, she's just one of these amazing people who everybody loves and wants the best for everybody and that was a little bit sickly sweet for me. And then towards the end of the book, Mr. Waldhurst picks her as his eligible wife instead of the other potential women in the novel. So that first half was really difficult to stomach because it was just a little bit too floaty. Oh, yes. Oh, this. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, da, da, da. And she's a plain Jane, but everybody loves her. And it was just a little bit unrelatable to me. But the second half, kind of more twists and twi turns, twists and turns and plots happen where... Mr. Walderhurst is, is kind of out of the picture and somebody that belongs to his family, a relative and a nephew, kind of wants to inherit the family. And then when he realises that Emily's going to have his, potentially his inheritance because she's now married to Mr. Walderhurst, so the nephew's not going to get anything, the nephew and his wife kind of try and live at the property while Mr. Walderhurst is away and try and corrupt Emily and try and destroy things so that they can live there. And that has repercussions. Um, that bit was a lot better, so it kind of redeemed this book for me because I was like, all oh, right, we're finally getting into a bit of a story and a bit of a romp here. Um, but this book was was quite slow. I think I might appreciate, on a re appreciate it on a reread, knowing um, that it's got a little bit of plot to it towards the end, but the first half was so jarring to the second that I can't believe this was a completed novel. And I just found it quite hard to connect with that bit. I started to have a bit of suspense, which I kind of like with my classics, a little bit of thriller-esque, what's going on kind of thing. And I, towards the end, I did like the characters better, but Mr. Walderhurst in particular, and to some extent Emily, weren't very fleshed out characters, so I didn't get to connect with them very well. They seemed kind of watery and one-dimensional, and, and for me, that makes me struggle to love a book when it's like that. So it was just a 3.5 for me. And then, let's have a little look where we're at then in between that one and Ponzi which I've just noticed I made a gap there was An American Marriage by Tara Jones I also gave that five stars I had quite a good few five star reads because this has been the first month in a while that I've read books and, and just loved them and just wanted to keep devouring them so it was quite a good month for me that book really blew me away in a very subtle way so it kind of is just focused on a marriage in america 
where the husband, his name is Roy and she's Celestial. They've just been married under a year and then Roy is falsely accused of raping a white woman and he gets incarcerated and then we kind of look through letters and from their viewpoints while he's incarcerated and Celestial is, you know, just trying to repair and live her life. How the relationship becomes kind of fractured and disconnected and the impact that incarceration has on that relationship and kind of the development of maybe another relationship for Celestial and all this kind of frustration and hate and bitterness because of the predicament and and the way that this is happening to modern marriages all over america for black people this is this is the worst possible outcome for them but this is something that they genuinely face even today false incarceration because you're black and in, in imprisonment because you're black it, so it was really current and really hard hitting with its themes but it was so beautiful and i love i just love novels that are kind of subtly picking at a relationship like i have mentioned and all of the five stars hit that target for me we really got to know these characters and what i loved is about roy and celestial and even andre who's a, a third character they all did things that i wouldn't do and things that were questionable but because of the way it was written I knew exactly why they did it and in the end you kind of feel this heartbreaking feeling for everybody because ultimately nobody's to blame about the situation and it could have gone a different way and we kind of feel how they feel and we really step into their shoes and understand the situation from Roy and Celestial's point of view, we don't really pick sides in the end, we're just heartbroken over the predicament for everybody. Um, and I loved that. I really loved that. So I gave that five out of five stars. And my brother made me recently read A Short Walk in the Hindu Kush by Eric Newby. Um, this is quite an old kind of classic travel novel. And I realised upon reading this, it, travel novels aren't really for me. So I gave that three out of five stars. It was kind of about Eric Newby himself and a colleague or a friend kind of traveling the hindi, hindi kush with him and it kind of is meant to be quite quintessentially british and funny because they they were amateur in terms of physical physique and training they hadn't done much training of, of hiking and and then the conditions were very difficult there and they didn't really anticipate that so we have quite a few anecdotes and funny things in the travel novel because they just really didn't know what they were up against and there was quite some difficult terrain that they faced um, but ultimately I just because it doesn't really have a plot as such I kind of started to lose a bit of interest in that so I just gave it the standard run-of-the-mill three out of five stars because he is a very good writer and it actually was written very well um, but the subject matter didn't kind of grip me the same whereas my brother really loves travel novels and the idea of travel he reads all of the Levison Wood books and watches all the series and, and likes that extreme terrain and things so it was more a book for him really. And the last book I read was Tangerine by Christine Mangan which I've lent to my mum so I do not have a copy and this was a really really good thriller for me so I haven't read as many thrillers this year and I actually really wanted to read quite a lot of thrillers this year and every time I've gone like when I've gone to the library and other places I haven't picked one up I've somehow got distracted by literary fiction which is story of my life because I, I I read a lot of literary fiction and I love a lot of literary fiction so it just kind of it hasn't worked out but Tangerine is a really interesting thriller so it's set in Tangier and it's about the main protagonist is what is her name Alice and she has an old school friend from college called Lucy who somehow turns up in Tangier but Alice has created a new life in Tangier. She's married her husband. Um, I forgot his name. And so she settled down in Tangier. But she doesn't like it. She finds it really claustrophobic and busy. And she doesn't like the bazaar. And it's set in the 50s. I think it's the 50s. And Lucy turns up one day. And she hasn't really seen Lin Lucy since, like I said, when she was at her college days. And uh, there's kind of a weird event that happened. Kind of made them a bit estranged. But Lucy's come into her life for no reason. And then odd things keep happening, things that make Alice question her own sanity at points. So it's just so juicy, the way it's written. And what I loved so much is the way Lucy's written as a character. 
she has the audacity to do really terrible things to Alice, to really mess with her head. And you read the book and she's so self-assured. You can you can watch it like it's a thriller when you're reading it. You really feel the characters come to life fully formed. And you can see the audacity that Lucy's trying to belittle Alice in front of other people. And you just want to scream and say, oh my God, it's so obvious what she's doing. Um, which, you know, you kind of want to scream at the telly when you watch a thriller, don't you? So I thought the writing was amazing to make me feel like that. And that was a book that I think was over 300 pages or just under. And I read that in about two days. I found it really, really gripping and interesting. And I would highly recommend if you want a thriller, especially one that's set in a different time, maybe it's more literary fiction thriller than your standard trope of on the streets of London or New York City or, you know, it's it's got a little bit different. And Tangier is almost a tangible character in, in this thriller as well. Then I would highly, highly recommend. Um, so I gave that five stars. So I did really well this month. I had... How many five stars? One, two, three, four. Four five stars. And um, I haven't yet had a five star with my library books, but I'm also really enjoying them. So um, I will catch up with you at a later date about those library books. But that's all the books that I wanted to talk about for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Bye now.